Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley speaking from Washington, D.C. This week, the reality has begun to penetrate even into remote corners of the world consciousness. It is a world economic depression. I stress a world economic depression. It is not a double dip. It has nothing to do with the periodic recessions of past decades. Soros is wrong. He says we are already in a double dip. The reality is, and this simply shows the estrangement from reality of many of these spokespersons, that it's been a depression all along. It was clearly a depression starting already. You could see it coming in the uh, late summer of 2007 when Countrywide blew, when there were panic runs on Northern Rock a couple of months after that. And by the time you got to the Bear Stearns insolvency in the spring, March of 2008, it was clearly a depression. And the uh, panic phase then set in with Lehman Brothers, AIG, Merrill Lynch, and the entire Wall Street money center complex, not to mention Lloyds Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, and the rest of it. So it was a total breakdown crisis of the entire Anglo-American banking system, which has been masked now by bailouts and by the uh, lending by the Federal Reserve in particular. So this entire debate, is it a double dip? This is absolutely idiotic. It is a world depression. And again, it is a breakdown crisis. It is not a boom and bust cycle. It is not the business cycle working or anything of the sort. It is the kind of economic financial breakdown crisis and disintegration which can threaten the existence of human civilization itself. Now, continuing the trend of past weeks, it is now focusing on Europe. As we know, this is the second wave of the Depression, as in the 1929 to 1933 uh, Depression breakdown crisis. We had three waves back then, and we headed towards three waves plus this time, because the world is a little bit more complicated. But we are now in one of the culminating moments of the second wave of the Depression, and that is, just as in 1931 in the summer, the European banking crisis. And in particular, it is the attack on France. Uh, Italy was uh, came under attack in July. Before that, it had been, of course, the so-called pigs, the uh, Portugal, well, starting with Greece, starting even with Dubai, uh, the smaller countries, the peripheral Mediterranean countries, then Italy starting around July 11th, and then increasingly over the last couple of weeks, it's been France. And the ratings agencies are playing an absolutely critical role. Now, let's just look at the uh, immediate situation. This past Thursday, that is to say the 22nd of September, a dark day, this was the day when the Dow was down 525 points at various times, but then it was able to be uh, resuscitated by the Plunge Protection Team, the PPT, the President's Working Group on Financial Markets, using Federal Reserve and the other liquidity. They were able to bring it back to minus 391, a loss of only 3.5%. And you can see the handwriting on the wall for the banks. Bank of America, which has been downgraded, down 5%. J.P. Morgan down 3.5% on Thursday, the 22nd of September. UBS down 4%. Citibank down 6.1%. Morgan Stanley down 5.5%. Goldman Sachs down 3.88%. Goldman Sachs uh, bet wrong, thinking that the euro would revive, and they've already lost uh, a tremendous amount, something like 4 or 5% of what they bet on it, using uh, derivatives, needless to say. Uh, so the grim scene extends now even to the smartest guys in the room, Goldman Sachs. There's already a big difference between the previous round and they were still the financial geniuses of Goldman Sachs, and now where their name is mud along with everybody else. On that Thursday, the British were down almost 5%, Germany down 5%, France down 5 and a quarter percent Madrid was down 4.6%, Milan down 4.6%, Belgium down 5.35%. Uh, let's look at the stock of Sakgen, Société Générale, this is the one that is most heavily under attack 
The Sakgen stock is down 63% since July 1st. It was down 9% on Thursday. BNP Paribas down 57% since July 1st. Uh, and that includes uh, various, uh, well, the Banca Nazionale del Lavoro, also a part of it. Uh, Credit Agricole down about 9% also on the Thursday. So uh, today, Friday, the 23rd, the European markets were all down about 2%. The Asians had been down 2% in Japan overnight. But in Europe, in the late afternoon, it looks like the plunge protection team, or the equivalent thereof, was active over there. So that the Europeans today closed at flat to mixed But this is now um, a crisis of these uh, banks. The ratings agencies obviously playing a big role. Italy devalued, eight Italian banks devalued, eight Greek banks devalued, uh, and the French banks also, as well as Bank of America. So it's a frontal attack. It's now a constant sniping. It's not a single event, but it's a series uh, of these events. People who thought that gold was a safe haven, We'll see now that gold, nothing safe about it. It's it's not safe in the least, uh, and that's true for everything. Uh, we had commodities of all kinds down, oil down, gold down, silver down, everything down. Uh, the only thing that people uh, put their trust in is the U.S. Treasury bond. How ironic, after all the Republican Tea Party lunatic demagogy of the past, couple of months about how the United States is on the verge of bankruptcy, the United States is the new Greece. Instead, the world is piling into treasury bills. They can't buy them uh, fast enough. Let's take a look at some of the emerging markets. Brazil, uh, we, we're hearing that the BRICS are going to take over the world. Well, uh, not anytime soon. The Brazilian real has lost almost 20% of its value since the beginning of the summer. And on Thursday, the Brazilian real was down 6% in one day and then had to be brought back by the central bank spending some $3 billion in support operations. It turns out that the stock bubbles, the asset bubbles in Brazil and many other places were a figment of QE2. It was a result of hot money issued by the Federal Reserve. And the centrality of these U.S. institutions is, uh, is um, uh, quite striking to see again and again. Uh, more recently now, India on Thursday down 4%. Indonesia down 9%. This is the stock markets uh, in one day. Brazilian stocks down 5.5%. Mexican stocks down 5%. Uh, we've got signs of a slowing in China. The Purchasing Managers Index in China indicates contraction. It is a world economic depression. It is not the crisis of any part of the world economy. It is a general breakdown crisis of the entire thing. Nobody, but nobody is immune. Nobody will be spared. It is time now for a recovery program, which must, by its very nature, be worldwide. Uh, commodities down. This is, of course, because banks are unwinding their derivatives bet on these various commodities, and this is now taking its toll on c currencies that were considered to be high flyers. The Canada dollar, the Australian dollar, have lost heavily because of the decline in these uh, commodities. Uh, Switzerland has taken itself out of the running as a safe haven. They're trying to keep money out lest their uh, remaining export uh, uh, facilities be completely destroyed by having the Swiss franc too high. Right now, it's Nucky and Stucky. Nucky and Stucky. Norway, Sweden, and Singapore are getting the hot money looking for safe havens other than the dollar, but mainly the dollar. And back in a minute on World Crisis Radio.